I'm going to show you three different examples of the shell method. We're going to take one revolved around the y-axis, one revolved around the x-axis, and then one around a different axis. What we're doing are building these inner stacking shells. So my shell looks like this. Here's a sample shell and I can draw another sample shell. I'm using the height of that function as the height of my cylindrical shell, and then I'm inner stacking these. Now it's really hard to see what exactly these shells look like from my picture, but I've got this great applet here. Shout out to the creator of this applet. You can see that I've got the same region. As I go ahead and move my dot along the x-axis, we are creating these cylindrical shells, and I can give you a top view and a bottom view. Now this app is only gonna give me one shell at a time, so you have to imagine that we're creating multiple shells, keeping each one and stacking them inside of one another. The radius of my cylindrical shell, the circle on the bottom, is gonna be along the x-axis. And you can see that the height of that shell is moving along with our function. So as we take each of these, we can create a volume. Let's go ahead and do that back on our screen. I'm gonna look at a sample cylindrical shell. So here's a sample cylindrical shell. This sample shell is really wrapped up into a tube shape. So if I were to cut the tube shape in the direction of this height, it would unwind to a rectangle. Now I've got two dimensions here to my rectangle. I have the height, which is the same as the height of my cylinder, but I also have this width. The width happens to be the circumference of the circle created by my cylinder. A circumference is 2 pi r. As I put my volume together, our volume as the other volumes that we've seen are going to be an area times a thickness. So area times thickness. Let's go ahead and start by determining the thickness of the material that makes this shell up. Our thickness is always going to be perpendicular to the height. So our thickness for this orientation is going to be a dx. Next, we need the area. Well, to build the area, I can take the surface area of each of those shells and then with the thickness, create this solid of revolution. So let's get that surface area, which really is just the area of this rectangle. Well, I know that an area is equal to length times width. So I've got a two pi r here and an h that make up the area of my rectangle. That becomes this value here. So two pi r h, and then I've got my dx. Because I've got a dx, my variable of integration is also an x. If it were a dy, you would have y's in your integral, but because this is an x, I know that I also need my limits of integration, that should be a two, to be in terms of x. So let's see, what do I need to deal with? I need to get my limits of integration, which are x's. My two and my pi are both constants. I do need my radius and my height. Let's go ahead and start with the height. The height gets me, actually if I draw it on my sample shell here, my height gets me to the height of my function. So as you're breaking these down, the height is gonna be related to your function and your radius, my radius is increasing as I am moving along my x-axis. So they're really increasing from zero, which is my lower limit of integration, up to my upper limit of integration, x2. We're gonna find that in just a second. So r really is gonna be my variable x. You might need to adjust it, but it's directly related to your limits of integration. So we need to get that height, f of x. We do want our height in terms of x, so that's gonna be my function. Um, let's put this together so it's a little neater. I've got my two pi. My radius is directly related to my limits of integration, so I can just use my variable x. My height is my function, which is negative x squared plus four x, and then I've got my dx. 
limits of integration are all that's left. I have zero, which I can see as my first x value. As I move through those radii, I'm gonna end up right here, and that's gonna be where my parabola crosses the x-axis. So let's go ahead and take that parabola and set it equal to zero. So zero equals negative x squared plus four x. I give myself a little bit more room here. I can factor an x out, so we get zero is equal to x, negative x plus four, and that gives me my two limits of integration, zero and negative four plus four, so I want a four there. Those are my limits of integration, so zero to four. I'm gonna clean this up just a little bit, but I am not gonna do the integral, zero to four, x, which is my radius related directly to the 0 and 4. And then I've got my height, which is my function, negative x squared plus 4x dx. If you simplify this, and it's a really nice integral to do, you are going to end up with the answer of 128 pi divided by 3. Next, let's rotate around the other axis. This time I'm gonna revolve y equals radical x around the x-axis. I also have this bound by the line x is equal to four. So this line right here is at x equals four. Let me go ahead and draw in my mirror image so we can get an idea of what this looks like. I'll give it a little bit of a circular shape there. And then let's draw in a sample shell. So my sample shell is gonna look something like this. Something like that. If I draw it off to the side, you can see that this one is situated in the opposite direction as our first one. So we can start with that thickness. My thickness is now in the y direction. So this one's gonna be a dy. That means that I need everything, including my functions, in terms of y. Let's go ahead and start there. If I take this function, y is equal to the square root of x and square both sides, I get y squared is equal to x. This is that curve, the function that I've got up there in white. The vertical line is x equals 4. So we've got that. We also need our limits of integration. And I can see that my lower limit of integration is 0. My upper limit of integration is going to line up with this point of intersection when x is equal to 4 and I'm on that curve. So let's go ahead and take our two functions. The easiest way to solve this one is just to plug 4 in and set these two equal. So I get y squared is equal to x, but x is equal to 4. So y is equal to plus or minus 2, but I'm working in the first quadrant there. So we're going to go ahead and take that y is equal to 2, and that is my upper limit of integration. Let's take a look at our volume to see what we've got so far. So I can pull the 2 pi out in front. I'm integrating along the y-axis, and we are integrating from 0 to that intersection y-coordinate of 2, and then I need a radius and a height dy. Well, to get my radius, my radius is in the uh, y direction. So you can see that my radius is going to be lining up each time with values between 0 and 2. So in this case, r is directly related to y because of my orientation. So I've got that r is equal to y. The height, which is here, is the distance between my two functions. It's the distance between x equals 4 and y equals the square root of x, which we have rewritten as x equals y squared. So to come up with my height, my height is equal to my rightmost function minus my leftmost function. I want the difference or the distance between those two. So it's gonna be still functions, but this time I'm gonna take right minus left. My right function is x equals four. My left function is x equals y squared, and that is my height, so height equals that. I think I've got everything that I need now. Let's go ahead and put it all together. So the volume is equal to two pi, integral from zero to two, so zero to two, 
my radii are the y values as they move from 0 to 2, so y. And then my height is the distance between functions, 4 minus y squared dy. Now I encourage you to work this one out. This one is also a really nice one to go ahead and integrate. If you do, you're going to end up with the correct answer, I know it, of 8 pi. Next, we're going to revolve around a different axis. I've already drawn a lot of this one in. We're going to take that region which is shaded there in the first quadrant and revolve it around y equals negative 1. Now I can go ahead and just draw myself a sample cylinder. And if I do, a sample cylinder is going to look like this. Oh, not bad actually. So it's going to look like that. And then the bottom's going to be down here. Okay, so there's a sample cylinder. And you can see that the cylinder's height goes out to my function. And the cylinder's radius is measuring from the axis of revolution in the y direction. So instead of looking at that messy cylinder, let's go ahead and draw a new one. Here's our new cylinder. I need that thickness perpendicular to the height. So my thickness is a dy. So as I put my volume together, it's going to be 2 pi. I need my limits of integration. So y1 to y2 r h d y. Let's go ahead and deal with the radii first. We know that the radii are directly linked to our limits of integration. Our limits of integration are going to go from, this is just with the region that's shaded. So we're going to start with 0 here, and then I want to go up to this y value here. Well, because my line is y equals 9 minus x, you can think of that as negative x plus 9. mx plus b, 9 is my y-intercept, so it goes up to 9. So my radii are really measuring first to the axis from negative 1. So it first takes that distance of 1, and then it starts measuring along my interval of um, integration. So what does that mean? So as I put this together, I get 2 pi. Let me put those limits of integration in there, 0 to 9. My radii is going to be 1 plus y. So I'm going to take those limits of integration 0 to 9 and I'm going to add that extra band of 1. So 1 plus y. My height, my height is just the function and my function is measured from the axis, but I do need it in terms of y. Let's go ahead and take that function, that line, and solve it x in terms of y. So I had y equals 9 minus x. I'm going to bring the negative x to the other side so it's positive. And let's subtract the y so we end up with a 9 minus y. This is the height, so the height is that function, and I'm going to write that in there as a 9 minus y, and then we end up with dy. You are doing so great. Take a look at this next video here. It's going to help you as you continue to move through calculus. Thanks so much for watching.